This is the story of you. The date, 25th November 1971. In the old town of Kilmanock, the angels rejoice as the beautiful baby is born, Sandra Kilpatrick. The story may be started in Kilmanock, but it wasn't long before that Sandra started her travels across the Stirling and bedded into the Raplock, moving on to the Cornton. With her continuing life in the Cornton, some of her friends and family have decided to join in and rejoice her life by collecting some stories and information about Sandra that she probably wants to hear. Enjoy! So, how do you know my mum? Right. Sandra and I have been friends since primary five at Riverside Primary School. So, my first story that I um, is when we were at nursery and she used to pick me up and say we had to hurry because there was still a baked potato in the oven. Well, my first memory of Sandra is when I was about Mum brought her back from the hospital. I thought I was getting a new doll, but here I got a new sister. When when did we meet Sandra? Oh. When? I knew Sandra from Steve, and then I bumped into her uh, with her lovely daughter Brooke walking down the street here when she came to look at the house, and it just felt like the thing that was meant to be. And thankfully, she got the house, and she became. Besties with Annie. Yes, I knew her from Olivia and constantly being scared of calling on Brooke. One of my first memories with Sandra was we were up behind the wall, me, my dad, Brooke and Sandra, and that was the first time Sandra witnessed my dad complaining and she was so embarrassed because she'd never complained. Now there's this argument, is she's either been here for four years or five years and we can never get to the bottom of it. So maybe about four or five years ago, I don't my first memory of Auntie Sandra would probably be when I was about 10 year old and me and my brother Grant went down to Newquay on holiday and um, we were standing getting a family picture and a group of seagulls decided to do its business all over me. Um, everyone was laughing and I was so embarrassed. So Auntie Sandra grabbed my hand and <laughs> hightailed it down the road to the high street and we went into the dearest shop possible and I was allowed to pick any outfit I wanted. It was probably that day that I realised that I wouldn't go far wrong in life if I had an auntie like Sandra having my back. The first time you met Sandra was at a Halloween party at Becky's house. Her and Brooke were along there, Ian and I and the kids went along and had such an amazing night, an amazing party. We danced and got drunk and really got to know each other and we've been pals ever since. So I met Sandra here at the River House. Well, we met her for a coffee after she'd been painting the fence. Turned out six and a half hours later. Uh, the coffee was pretty cold, but the company was good. So I accepted it. It was obvious that Sandra's impact on people's lives was immediate, instantly falling in love with her charm, her smiles, and her personality. Uh, what's a funny story about Sandra? Just one. But there's so many. I know. There was one time when I was in at the, the Buzz and Beast for dinner and uh, I think you and David were in for um, a few drinks at the back and uh, you decided to come over and ask me to introduce you to my pal when you were absolutely steaming, preceded by um, midway through our dinner, you sitting down, putting your arm around my pal and uh, basically kept begging me to introduce you until I did, uh, by which point I think my pal was a bit more awkward than the two, me and you, so <laughs> that was a funny night. <laughs> um, my favourite memory of Sandra is the time when we were at the street party and she just came out of nowhere up and took a big massive bite at Ian's burger <laughs> and we laugh about it all the time. It was so funny, but we've forgiven her for that over the other way. And when I was facing in my papa as a pirate and you were asking me questions and saying um, is it a good pirate or a bad pirate and I was asking him and telling you and then um, you said if I was good at Facebook and I said, well, actually, yes. What's your favourite memory of her? Um, we never get glass What about the time she introduced herself to you at Street Party? Oh, yeah, yeah. She, she obviously came running over as Sandra does. Um, yeah, and I was having a drink and we just talked away and she said, well, what do you do for a living? I said, oh, I'm a, a pharmacist. Well, that's a different story. I know. It? Yeah. I'm a pharmacist, all oh, right. I've never met a pharmacist that drinks. 
That must have been the same time then, because it was the same party that she was stealing the burger out of your mouth. You were standing eating a burger. Yes. And she came along and ran up beside you and actually took a bite while you were. Like and, and I think she stole Ian's burgers as well. Yeah, she was on that night. One thing you don't know about Sandra is that I can never leave McDonald's because she always wants money to leave. Is when I was pregnant. I still had two and a half weeks to go and Sandra decided to meet me in the town. She wanted to buy me my baby box. It was a new one and I didn't realise what was going on that day with me. I was having pains, I couldn't get comfortable. I want to sit down, I want to stand up, I want to get something to eat. And poor Sandra, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was going on myself, so I said to her, I need to go home. I was getting in the taxi, no, I don't want to go home. I couldn't decide what to do. So eventually, Sandra managed to get me in the taxi. So we got home, she phoned mum, so mum came along to the house and actually was in labour. And in Sandra's face was a pure picture. She was worried sick and just didn't know what was wrong with her sister. So mum came along and was in labour just for a short time and then Colin came along. So she had a lovely wee niece and she got the biggest cuddle ever from her auntie. Probably be <laughs> opening my eyes and she was hovering above me when I was supposed to be sleeping and that was her coming in to check me and Grant were still breathing. <laughs> she done it till I was about 16 year old. <laughs> we, we always have fun with Sandra. She's great at a party. She's brilliant at throwing herself into the silly games and eating people's burgers and dancing and everything so we love her anyway happy birthday sandra i'm a bill christmas eve and she's allowed to come up the town we're going to the disco we promised dad we wouldn't drink so she came to the disco we we're having a good time and then everybody kept on buying her drinks so she got quite drunk. So my friend Keith was there, so we tried to sober her up by walking home. A short walk ended up taking about an hour. It was two steps forward, five back. But we managed to kind of sober her a little. Her, her skirt was ripped. And to straighten her up, get her into the house, Dad and Mum said when we came back from the disco, we could open our presents. So Mum and Dad are sitting on the, the couch. Sandra's happy as Larry, and we're opening up for Christmas presents. Dad was none of the wiser, neither was Mum, and I was nearly having a heart attack. Ha! <laughs> There's too many stories to tell about Sandra and I. Most of them involve drink, Sandra not eating before she drinks, and then Sandra not being a little bit unwell. What makes Sandra great? What makes her awesome? Well, I think we can all agree she likes one, a burger, two, a party, three, a dance. I'm pretty sure she loves to dance. AJ. Actually, when we bring up dancing, that takes me back to my favourite memory of Sandra, which is how does that song go again?
Okay, uh, what makes her an awesome and great friend? <laughs> She's ecking nuts. But do you know what's really, really funny? I've got utter respect for you, Sandra, because you refuse to swear. It's, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I'm going to get you to swear one of these days, but utter respect because you don't swear. That's from me anyway. She's amazing. Couldn't have more joke. She always thinks about other people before herself. She um, is always there for me whenever I need her. Um, she educated me more than primary school. Um, she's a great role model. When I'm older, I want to be like her. Um, and overall, she's just amazing. The best. 50 years have been passed quite quickly. We've had some good times, some bad times, some sad times and some happy times. But we came through it all and everybody seems happy. And then all of a sudden along comes Brooke. And at the same time, I was retired. So I had some great times growing up with Brooke, chubbing on the pram and just getting to know her. Uh, all I can say is stay happy, stay safe. I love you lots. Um, but Sandra, why is she awesome? She's just so, you're beautiful inside and out. She's just a great friend, so caring. Um, and she's just part of your family. We're so lucky that she came um, and moved out of the street. So happy birthday, Sandra. What we love about Sandra is um, she is so fun, kind, happy, loving. She's like another mum for Annie. And I know that anytime Annie's with her, Looked after and cared for, and that makes me happy. Sandra always puts everybody before herself on every occasion. She thinks of everybody else before herself. When I broke my ankle, Sandra came over to see me every single day, even though she was going through a difficult time herself. But she always came to see me for that. She's amazing. I don't know, just the fact she always smiles. <laughs> So sweet. <laughs> Happy birthday, babe. Welcome, my mama. Hello, mama. You feed me. I love food and I love tuna. What makes my mom amazing? I think you see probably being with David. <laughs> You're absolutely right, right. It must be me that makes Sandra absolutely amazing. If you think not. Probably not. I think most likely it's because she's kind, she's caring, she's loving. There isn't a single person that knows her that has a bad thing to say about her. And she truly is the love of my life. Love you, babe. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Sandra! <laughs> this is a special birthday Sandra so please don't despair and it's a great achievement to be fair a birthday message so you should make a fuss and this one my dear is from the two of us the years gone past been a blast but that now is all in the past so it's upwards and onwards and fills to my head Oh aye, and by 10 o'clock you'll be in your bed. Happy birthday Sandra from me and me. There concludes the story so far. A tear in the eye as she's told she's a star. A smile, a grin and a cuddle too. One thing is clear, we all love you. Happy birthday Sandra.